What if I told you that this chill Australian could very well be the next welterweight champion of the world by this time next year? Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm Don with Palace Sports, and this is my first installment in a two-part video about dark horse title contenders within the UFC. What I mean by that is these fighters are not right up next for the belt, but within two fights, I'm very confident that they can be champ. In this first installment, I'm going to be talking about the rising welterweight, Jack Della Maddalena. If you enjoyed this video, give that like button a left hook and subscribe to Palace Sports for more MMA content. And with all that out the way, let's get right into the video. Jack Della Maddalena, or JDM, is a stand switch mixed martial artist hailing from Perth, Australia. He has a 17-2 professional record and is a clean 7-0 in the UFC. His most recent fight was with Gilbert Burns, where he absolutely destroyed him with a knee to the head in the third round. To briefly go over his skill set, JDM is a well-rounded mixed martial artist with a crisp, boxing-forward approach. What sets his striking apart is his ability to constantly mix up his boxing pressure to the head and to the body to keep his opponents guessing. So far into his UFC career, he has displayed some real fight IQ and has a great sense of when to take risks with his punching combinations. When he's in the neutral range, he does a good job of moving as he jabs to circle his opponent into the cage. You know every fighter can obviously punch, but having positional awareness when striking in the midst of a fight is something that sets great strikers apart. To complement this, JDM has great striking defense. I've rewatched his fights and everyone he's fought in the UFC just can't seem to find their shots when fighting him. His footwork is a massive contributor to both his offensive and defensive success on the feet. In the boxing, his hands are always where they should be. I'm not one to vouch for the legitimacy of MMA math, but his significant strike defense ratio of 66% is the highest among all active welterweights. Even in later rounds, he leaves very little openings when he's striking. He still has that aura about him of having never been chinned on his side, which can never be a bad thing in a division loaded with dangerous strikers. He has even proven to be a capable wrestler as well, with a first round submission over Randy Brown. Even though Randy Brown is by no means a world-class grappler, having that choke on your resume at least like legitimizes your takedown threats, and that way it keeps his opponents at least a little bit worried if he ever tries to shoot. Overall, the dude's just a well-rounded killer who's very honed in all aspects of his game. You really just don't want to be in the octagon with this guy for 25 minutes. If you're new to MMA, well now you're up to speed on JDM, and if you're a hardcore fan, you've definitely been around for JDM's come up. But where does he go from here on his journey to welterweight gold? As of right now, he has no booked fights, and he's currently the fifth ranked welterweight in the world. Given his undefeated run to the top of the division, I doubt the UFC would hand him a fighter below his rank right now. So what's next for JDM? I think the most likely outcome for his next fight would be the fan favorite Shavkat the Nomad Rachmanov. This would definitely be a tough fight for JDM, as he also has the undefeated aura about him. He's also kind of like an OG person, so he's got that going for him. Jokes aside, he's an absolute savage grappler. He's coming off three submissions straight. However, Shavkat has shown that he has some holes in his striking defense that he's able to get away with because he's got that Stone Age granite chin. JDM is a very accurate striker and also picks his shots very well, and I'm confident that he'd be able to expose some of Shavkat's imperfections in the striking. JDM's recent win over Gilbert Burns has proved that he can survive on the ground against a high-level grappler, and he even adapted to the takedowns late in the fight to land that flush knee KO. I understand that Gilbert Burns isn't the submission threat that Shavkat is, and that a need to the dome on a takedown attempt just isn't going to happen every fight. But this performance at the very least proves that you need to carefully set up your takedowns when fighting this guy. Nobody in the weight class has really been able to beat either of these fighters, but I think the coalescence of JDM striking and his defense both on the feet and on the ground would make this a very tough fight for the Nomad. Considering that Dana White just announced that Bilal Muhammad will be fighting Leon Edwards for the belt at UFC 304, and that we're kind of unsure on what Kamaru Usman's future is in the welterweight division, whether or not he's going to stay at middleweight, the only other fighter ahead of JDM on the rankings is Colby Chaos Covington. Colby Covington is a capable offensive wrestler with a very aggressive game plan to weaponize his endurance. He's looking to bite down on the mouthpiece and swing his way to a knockdown and then chase the finish from there. However, considering that the champ Leon Edwards just gave him a 50-piece nugget on the feet, 
It's safe to say that Colby Covington would struggle against a similarly well-rounded striker. Even if Colby Covington were to come back hungry and improved after his last fight with the champ, I think JDM's defense would completely neutralize his pace, and we would just see him just walk into a bunch of punches, like he did with Leon Edwards. Should JDM put on a show in his next matchup, get a big finish or a dominant decision, he's bound for a title shot. He would be matched up against the winner of Leon Edwards vs Bilal Muhammad at UFC 304. This is a topic for a future video, but I'm confident that Leon will defend the belt and move on to fight our boy JDM. I gotta keep it honest with you guys, I think Leon is kinda him. He's gonna be a challenge for anyone in the division to beat in a 5 round fight. He's got excellent kickboxing ability, accuracy with his striking, he's got real good fast twitch speed in the cage, and good jujitsu to back it all up. His trilogy with Kamaru Usman has given him ample experience trading in the pocket with experienced strikers. But if there's any experienced striker that can stay calm and endure Leon's speed and power, it's JDM. JDM has been striking for a long time, and should he get a crack at the belt, that would instantiate that he's leveled up his game further than where he's at right now. Something I've neglected to mention until now is JDM's durability. In their last fight, Gilbert Burns cleanly snapped JDM's arm with a heavy high kick. And this hardly slowed JDM down at all. You know, you kind of need your arm to throw a punch. One can train hard their whole life in any given martial art with perfect discipline, but this kind of durability is a physical gift that just can't be taught. Out of all the poor souls in the welterweight division that have to match up against Leon, I think Jack Della Maddalena's unique boxing style and calm defensive composure gives him the best chance of becoming the champ. That's all I have for you guys today. If you vibed with this style of video, let me know by leaving a like. And if you have any thoughts on JDM's shot at the belt, I'd love to read your take down in the comments. Stay tuned for our next video where I talk about a dark horse title contender in the middleweight division. I'm Don with Palace Sports, and as always, thank you so much for watching.